Today we continue in our look at the 25 ways of the wise. I continue this series in the book of Proverbs because the book of Proverbs gives wisdom to our children, to parents, to all of us. It teaches us how to live skillfully, effectively, and righteously in a wicked world. We need the book of Proverbs because the world in which we live is not a wise world, and it influences our children. And so they need the book of Proverbs. I urge you, beloved, read the book of Proverbs to your children. And all I'm trying to do in this series is to make this book more accessible to parents and children by placing it in a topical manner so that wisdom can be at your fingertips. I've written a book called What Would Solomon Say? And the book is arranged in letters from children to Solomon in such a way that children can participate interactively in the study of Proverbs with their parents. And so you can make a wonderful Bible study time out of What Would Solomon Say? And as an ans- and as a, a separate part of that, just as an addition and a supplement, I prepared a booklet called The 25 Ways of the Wise, which really simplifies who the wise person is in, uh, con- in opposition to the fool. Because the book of Proverbs presents the wise versus the fool. Almost every proverb is about the wise man, what he does, how he feels, what he would say, how he would act versus the fool. And the fool is not someone who is not smart. The fool is someone who disrespects God, who does not believe in God, and doesn't fear God. And so the ways of the wise versus the ways of the fool, what a wonderful way to teach your children how to think biblically, how to think righteously, how to act with wisdom. Wisdom, said the Bible, is the principal thing. So get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. God does not minimize the wisdom of the book of Proverbs. And parents, I urge you to make this book a meal plan for your children during the week. Make it a fundamental way for them to understand who God is and how they should act towards you, how they should act towards their peers, how they should view the world. Make Proverbs a paradigm. For your children. Make Proverbs a framework, a worldview. Give them the wisdom of God. And if this book can help, if What Would Solomon Say can help, which is now available on Amazon, just type in What Would Solomon Say, and my name, Reverend Vieira, that's V I E I R A, V I E I R A. Just type it in, you can get the book for your children, or get the 25 Ways of the Wise. All you've got to do is send me an email. Uh, to pastorbv at gmail.com. That's gmail dot com. That's p a s t o r b v at gmail dot com. And I would love to send you a PDF copy, an ebook copy, so that you can download it for your children and have the twenty five ways of the wise. This wonderful booklet. But I continue preaching through it today, or rather teaching through it, because as I work with young people so much during my own teaching career and and my preaching ministry, and also I have three boys of my own, I've come to recognize that nothing is more powerful than delineating for them who the wise person is and who the fool is. Now, you'll hear me say wise guys as I read this or as I go over it with you, but that means uh, women also and, and, and young women. Sometimes I'll just say wise person, okay? But let's pick it up. We covered some ground last week, and now we come to Wise guys, don't hang around with fools. A fool is someone who lacks common sense and proper judgment because of his willful disobedience and irreverence towards God. So the fool is not someone who is just not bright. He may have gotten great grades in school, but the Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And so what we need to recognize is the fool, someone who has no reverence for God, and therefore he lacks common sense and proper judgment. You see, the book of Proverbs says wisdom does not come from going into the the cave and staring at the shadows all day. Wisdom doesn't come from staring at your belly button. Wisdom doesn't come from analyzing and pondering the great issues of the universe. Wisdom doesn't come from philosophy. Wisdom comes from the fear of God. The book of Proverbs states unequivocally, that wisdom is the possession of God and the prerequisite of God to give to people. He gives, those to, he gives wisdom to those who fear him. 
And this is very important because we need to understand that biblical wisdom is very different from the wisdom of the philosopher and from the wisdom of the world. They may have some good things to say, but at the bottom line, at the end of the day, if you want truth, it is found in Jesus Christ. And it is found in God, our Lord Jesus Christ. It is found in the Bible. It is found all throughout the scriptures and primarily in bite-sized portions for our children to remember in the book of Proverbs. So we don't want our kids to hang around with fools. And it's okay, parents. You can tell your kids, look, uh, that's a that may be a nice person to you, but in my eyes, he or she is a fool because they don't have proper judgment. They may not be obeying their parents, as we've said earlier. They have the signs of the fool, and you need not to be talking to them on the phone or friending them on Facebook or Find them on Twitter or send them a message on Snapchat, whatever means you want to use. Don't walk with them. Don't talk with them. The Bible says, Proverbs 13, verse 20, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So wise guys know how to avoid fools. The next way of the wise, wise people know how to control their anger. They know that only fools love to fight and argue. Let me say it again. Wise people know how to control their anger. They know that only fools love to fight and argue. And I want to say, hey, this is a great lesson to teach our kids, but an even better lesson for us to model in our homes. Because you know if you're married or if you're in a relationship or if you have children, whatever covenant relationship God has been pleased to put you in, anger sometimes becomes our first temptation. We want to respond, we want to react if we get hurt, if we feel insulted, if someone does something wrong to us in the home. Anger is often our first response, and then we want to continue that anger by building strife and quarreling. Look, anger is not a sin. Paul says, be angry, but sin not. The sin is to dwell in the anger. The sin is to think from the anger. The sin is to act from the anger. The sin is to let the anger become the spirit that rules your heart and your home. That's the sin. Proverbs 23, 20 verse 3 says, It is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. See, a wise man, the Bible says, a wise person knows how to avoid strife. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife. But every fool is quick to quarrel. So if you're being bothered in your home, bothered at work, if you're tempted to anger, listen to the Holy Spirit who's telling you, look, it is to your glory that you can overlook this transgression. It is to your glory that you can walk away. I know the world says, get it off your chest, vent it right away, or you'll get a heart attack. Don't don't internalize your anger. You are better off letting it out. All kinds of nonsense. The Bible does not teach that. Nor does it teach to bottle it up and have it pent up and seething. No. Quiet anger is worse than anger spoken out. What it does teach is to avoid the strife by going to God, asking God's wisdom. God, help me in this moment to act like the Lord Jesus. God, speak your peace to my heart. God, give me a wisdom I don't know. Oh, God, help me. Because if you don't help me now, I feel like I'm going to explode and say the wrong thing. God, help me to bridle my tongue and speak only words of grace. Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord my God. Cry out to God. Cry out to the Holy Spirit. I often tell people, they say when, you, when you're when you in a fire or or something, stop, drop, and roll. Well, what I say is if, if your heart's on fire, stop talking. Stop your mouth. Drop. Drop to your knees and roll. Roll the burden back onto God. Roll those emotions onto God. Roll that temper onto God. Tell God about your feelings. Talk to him about what you're going through. He doesn't want a sanctimonious prayer. He wants you to pour out your heart before him. The Bible says, pour out your hearts before him. And that includes what we feel. It includes the emotional turbulence that's in our heart. We will be foolish to say we are not tempted to be angry consistently. We'd be foolish to say that we're not tempted to lash out. Those things are real. We are tempted in the flesh. But the Bible teaches to roll, to pour your heart out before God and to roll your burdens onto Him. 
Yes, stop, drop, and roll. Stop the talking. You, you have to be quiet. You have to know that the tongue is the way to trouble. When you are tempted to anger, you need to find a way to be quiet. Quiet your heart. As David says, put a muzzle on my mouth. Stop. Talk is terrible when you're angry because words are multiplied and before you know it the quarrel breaks out in words like a a water from a dam cannot be stopped and you're saying things you can't believe you're saying them oh beloved you know what i mean it's happened to you it's happened to your spouse it's happened to your children don't multiply words when you're angry stop then drop to your knees even if in your heart you drop to your knees find a place alone sometimes retreat from the situation give God space to work his amazing grace. Yes, give God space to work his amazing grace. Say to the person that you are in conflict with, you know what, I just need some time to think. Excuse me, I need some time away. I'm sorry, I I, I heard you. I need some time to pray. I just have to settle my heart. Listen to what you've said because it does take two to argue. And if you're quiet, the fight can't happen. So then stop the talk. Drop to your knees and roll those burdens on to prayer. Stop, drop, and roll. I hope that blesses you, beloved. I know I've tried it in my own life, and God has blessed me by being silent. Even in my own home, when I'm tempted to maybe say something I shouldn't to my spouse, I give God some space for His grace, and then He floods my heart with wisdom. And sometimes He tells me, hey, there's something you don't know about this situation. Or perhaps He tells me, hey, you're at fault here. What you didn't do led to this emotional breakout in your home. Or what you did do. Sometimes it's a sin of omission. Sometimes it's a sin of commission or commission. But in any case, when I'm humble before God, God reveals the wisdom I need to make my relationship succeed. And He'll do the same for you. So it is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. And what a wonderful, wonderful lesson to teach your children. That wise people know how to control their anger. They know that only fools love to fight and argue. You know, your kids grow up in a culture where it is macho to always want to fight. They see their friends in school, their peers carrying on. They see them, you know, the the glory goes to the tough guy. And they see it in our culture also in sports. The person who's cursing out the referee and, and he is often given the biggest press and the bad guys get the most attention. But you know something? You want to teach your kids, it is to a man's honor to avoid strife. Proverbs 20 verse 3, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Then Proverbs 12 16 says this, a fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. Wow, let me read that again. A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. There is so much wonderful truth here. You see, a fool, when he is annoyed, shows it on his face, wears his heart on his sleeve, he's got to let you know right away by his visage, by his countenance, by his words, that by his temperament, by his response, I'm angry. I'm annoyed at what you said. Ah, but the Bible says a wise man, a prudent man, a man of caution, a man of judgment, a man of wisdom, takes that insult on the inside, discusses it with his spirit, rolls it around and says, you know what? I can overlook that. By God's grace, I can overlook that. The fool is always responding to stimulus. As soon as his temper is stimulated, he responds. The wise person seeks space between the stimulus and the response. He seeks space between what happens to him and how he's going to respond. So he does not immediately display his emotion. You will find that Proverbs teaches that the wise man knows how to control himself. He knows how to control his face, how to control his emotions, how to control his expressions, how to give some time for his mind to think properly, how to keep his tongue from speaking when it has no other purpose but causing trouble. The wise man, the Bible says in Proverbs 17 verse 27, a man of knowledge uses words with restraint. And a man of understanding is even-tempered. Amen.